It was a Friday afternoon. Sudden onset, worst headache of my life. Powered through the weekend, chewing on Tylenol, and Monday morning I go to my primary care, and he tells me it's stress. The fact is, stress was nothing new to Tom Timlin as Boston Transportation Commissioner and then Highway Administrator of the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, Tom knew about stress and headaches, and he knew this was different. 99% of the time, it may be a stress headache, but somebody with no history of them, some, with a sudden onset of a localized headache, when I bend over to tie my shoes, the, the throbbing felt like my head was gonna come off my shoulders. I'm, I'm, uh, and, and I told him all of this. I told him the pain was so bad that I couldn't fall asleep at night, and when I did, it woke me up. So his answer was he gave me a sleeping pill. But the last thing I said to him walking out of his office is the prescriptions in my hand, and I said, you know, you're the doctor, but I gotta tell you, I feel like you're not listening to me. Still, Tom plowed ahead with his schedule, which included volunteering as auctioneer at a charity event. And that day, while doing this auction, it felt almost like a, a rumbling in my head as if somebody had their hands on both sides of my head and was shaking it. And what I know now is that was the aneurysm rupturing. I went over to Heather, and I'm not a let's go to the hospital kind of guy, and I, I remember I just, she looked at me and she said, are you okay? I said, and I just said, you need to take me to the emergency room right now. He had a terrible headache and he was pretty quiet the whole way and groaning a little bit, holding his head. And then when we got to Dudley, he got really bad. And I think at that time we both knew that we were in some trouble and I, I remember getting her attention and all I said is, you have to get us there. Tom never lost consciousness and was able to describe his symptoms to the ER physician who called for an MRI. And I come out of the initial MRI and, and you know, the, the guy says, listen, we don't really know what's going on yet, but they told us to do this for you. We're gonna send you back out and we're gonna get caught up. We'll do this report, we'll give them to the doctors. And when they put me back into the MRI tube and you know, I could hear the door opening and closing and I could hear feet coming and going. And the whole time I'm, I'm lying there and I'm saying I'm in serious, serious trouble. They said if he makes it through the night, we'll see what our options are. We're gonna keep him. He's stable, the, the blood has ruptured, it has done its damage. We are gonna, we're gonna take a wait and see. Tom had surgery the next morning to insert an endovascular coil. His recovery and his education about aneurysms began. I learned that of the people who suffer a ruptured brain aneurysm, 30% don't make it to the emergency room, right? 50% die in the first 24 hours. And the ones that don't, you know, 50% of that population uh, risk of dying in the first 30 days. Tom resigned from the Department of Transportation and enlisted as an advocate for the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. The way I tend to get better is to try to give back a little bit, you know, and, and it makes me feel good, you know, and, and my whole objective is to work myself out of this volunteer job. You know, I want to be in a position where there's no more need to go to D.C., there's no more need to talk to Congress, there's no more need to beg my family and friends for money. You know, I want to just sit in a rocking chair someplace and say, isn't it so cool that brain aneurysms are no longer, there's no more research that needs to be done, there's no more cure that needs to be found, there's no more support that needs to be given because it's off, it's off the list. And until that day comes, then we're gonna continue to do what we do and, and how we do it.